Hi everyone, I'm Michelle and welcome back to my meadow. In this video, we are going to be talking about monarch butterflies and cutting back your milkweed so that the monarchs can continue the migration and to help get rid of OE. So let's get started. As I have been walking around the garden for the last few days, I keep spying more monarch chrysalises. It's funny because it seems like every time I turn around, I find another one and another one. But today we need to do some trimming so we can send these monarchs on their way. If you love gardening and you love having butterflies, one of the things that you've probably done is added milkweed to your garden. In some areas it grows so prolifically that they don't have to go and add milkweed, but I plant milkweed in my garden. And as frequently as possible, I try to purchase a native milkweed. There are multiple varieties. When you can, having a native version is best. But what I really want to talk to you about is OE. OE is a parasite that monarch and queen butterflies get that causes them to be weak and often they don't emerge from their chrysalises or if they do they're malformed it's just not a good thing and i found that the more i tried to engage with the butterflies the more oe that i had so i have decided to go a different route in my garden at the end of each monarch season, I cut back all of my milkweed down to just a few inches above the ground. So in my area, it doesn't get cold enough to kill back the tropical milkweed and other areas it might. So it's important for me to cut back all of my milkweed because I can no longer remember which one is tropical and which one is a native. So I cut it all back down to just a few inches above the ground so that we can help control the OE let the plants die back and next season they come back roaring now it always makes me sad because today i have bees and flies on the flowers but these flowers have to go because a couple more chrysalises are about to emerge and i do not want them to stick around here thinking that there is a place for them to have food for their babies so for this one it'll be easy enough to cut it back with my pruners Might trim the bergamot while I'm here. The other reason that I want to do this is I want to remove the food source so that the monarchs continue migrating south to Mexico. We don't want them to stick around here. We want them to finish their migration pattern. Just when I think the monarchs are done, I find a couple more. So I will put these away with the milkweed so they can finish, but hopefully we won't have any more laying eggs over here because there won't be another place for that to happen. Feel free to check with your own local butterfly or maybe we can find some resources to share online to figure out when you should do this in your area. And believe it or not, this is a milkweed too and it is definitely too large for me to get with the pruners. So I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna take it down with my silky saw. That wasn't too hard. So that was an easy enough task, getting that milkweed trimmed back. Now, I will set those little guys I found aside so they can finish eating whatever milkweed is left, but I don't want any of the new ones that are going to a close laying any more eggs around the garden. So this will help prevent that and hopefully keep them moving along the way to Mexico. If you have any suggestions or you have comments about how you're using milkweed and monarchs and other pollinators in your area, feel free to put them in the comments below. I love having conversations about these things. And as we all know, it is in our best welfare to take great care of the pollinators because they take care of us. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to know more about kind of the crazy things we're doing around here in our Northeast Florida garden. And until next time, my friends, remember to wear that high quality sunscreen, drink plenty of water, and of course, have a fantastic day.